What's up you guys, it's NicoFish1000. Um, what I want to talk to you guys about today is the nitrogen cycle. and You can tell I kind of just didn't feel like finishing the bubble letters because I can't be bothered. Okay, so if you're going to be keeping fish, it is, it, it's crucial that you know this. Like basically the entire filtration system, I'm not saying there aren't phosphates and other stuff, but basically your filtration system is made to um, to assist the process of the nitrogen cycle to not not only mechanical filtration but biological filtration for, to assist the nitrogen cycle and to get a good bacterial backbone. Something I like to call the bacteria in your tank. They are the backbone of your tank. Without the bacteria, I'm going to stop moving that because the camera goes out of focus. Without the bacteria, your fish die and they're dead. They don't come back to life. They just die. Um... So, uh, you're going to need to know a couple things. You need to know ammonia, which is NH3 with zero charge. Now, oh, here we go. I should back out a bit. You need to know ammonia, which is, ah, which is NH3. You're going to need to know nitrite. NO2 plus, and you're gonna need to know. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. NO2 minus. My bad. Yeah, and you need to go know uh, nitrate. NO and oops, I got off the screen. Three with a min negative charge again. Okay. So it is called the nitrogen cycle, but this is deceiving because in a fish tank, there is no cycle. This is basically it. You go from this step to this step, you have little bacteria that break it down. This step to this step, more little bacteria to make it down, to break it down to there. But what happens once you have nitrate? Well, that's when you do a water change. It's kind of hard to draw through this camera lens. I'm not even looking at the paper. That's when you do a water change. The thing with um, denitrifying bacteria is that they're anaerobic. And this is a term that you might want to be familiar with. Anaerobic. What does that mean? That they don't need oxygen. Well, I don't know. Well, that they don't use oxygen anyway. So where are they found? If you have a pond, you, you're going to have layer of detritus and some other stuff going downwards. Well, you're little bacteria are colonizing the areas that have like basically no oxygen and how are you gonna get this in an aquarium well people go well I have gravel well okay great you have gravel now you're gonna have a build up now unless you clean that gravel you're gonna have a build up of I don't know possibly even methane if you have all the decomposing stuff down there and that's bad so you're gonna have to clean that you have sand you're gonna want to aerate that so you can basically, these guys, just basically pretend they're not there. They might be there in small quantities, but for our purposes, they're not there. They're not going to make a difference. So nothing is going to be converting this nitrogen to N2, which would potentially bubble up out of your fish tank. Uh, nitrogen is important to note. It is a diatomic molecule, meaning it will be found in nature paired to itself, much like oxygen, which is O2. Um, so you do not have that. So, uh, um, what else was I going to say? Hold on. Uh, they're anaerobic. So, now what you have is a filter, possibly a canister filter or a hob. You're going to want mechanical filtration to get um, rid of particles, obviously, and keep your water clean. Uh, chemical filtration, like carbon, to get rid of tannins. And biofiltration, which is my favorite kind of filtration because it's really cool. So, you can buy it. A variety of things and basically the objective is to have a little thing here and you want this to have maximum surface area why because you need to have bacteria more surface area basically more more places I don't want to say area for the bacteria to colonize more bacteria and this will happen no bacteria and ammonia and your fish will die or nitrite and your fish will die or nitrate and well, it takes longer, but they will still die. 
Okay, so now you have your biological filtration. Now, how do you detect nitrate, nitrite, ammonia? Well, the thing with nitrogen compounds is that they are all soluble with water, for the exception of some that bond with lead or some other elements, which I don't remember at this moment. So for our purposes, they are water soluble. They are colorless, odorless, and tasteless. So you can't drink your fish water to find out if there are nitrates in there. You're gonna want either a test kit or I guess they sell digital testers now. So ammonia, in levels of 0.1 ppm, ppm means particles per million. So you have one million little molecules, if 0.1 of them are, well, I don't say 0.1 of one million because but whatever, you get the point. If 0.1 of those particles is ammonia, it's harmful. Now, generally, test kits to start detecting at one particle per million, I think. Two being considered very harmful, up to four, and then five, like, basically deadly. Nitrate. Nitrite. Slightly less harmful, but also prolonged exposure to 0.1 ppm is harmful. Nitrate, you want to keep it at less than 50 ppm. And it takes really, as to directly kill a fish, it will take a 1,000 ppm. And I found this very nice site, which I should credit, and it's the tropicaltank.com.uk. I'll include a link for you guys to read through the whole article, but this is just a basic summary. So basically, any of these things lead to death. This slower death, medium slow death, still fast, I guess, and quick death. Now, what I want to just place emphasis on is... Ammonia is basically window cleaner. In the past and still it's used to clean bathrooms, disinfect stuff. So basically your fish pee window cleaner, you pee window cleaner, very high concentrations. I think it's something like six, 16,320 particles per million or something in human urine. Don't quote me on that. Window cleaner. Window cleaner is not good for fish. Cleans windows, not fish. It kills fish. So you're going to want to have your filter and you're going to want to do water changes, obviously, at this stage or at any stage. Okay, so on a final note is how does this relate to your algae problem if you have one or if you're just watching this video for fun? So algae is going to want nitrate because, well, it's nutrients. It's what it needs to grow and whatnot. So you have green water. There's, I guess you could, there could be some very special filter, something with, I don't know, some sort of a filter pad, which is very small, so that it only allows molecules of water to go through. They sell those kinds of micro filters. It's just ridiculous. I've used one before. But either way, unless you have one of those things, there's no magical cure for your nitrate problem. Just do water changes. Just buckle up, do water changes, and you will have clear water. That's about it. Remember, just because your water is brown, those are probably tannins or something else leaching from anything you have there. Not nitrite, nitrate, nitrite, or ammonia. They are colorless, odorless, tasteless. So keep your bacterial colonies in good health. Dechlor before you add water to your tank. Test, I guess, if you need to test. And that's about it. See you guys.